push his way up the racetrack, and now here comes Jancic. Jancic goes by Query, and he goes by Inman. Burnell gets a great run, another three wide for the race lead. It's going to drag race off of turn four. Shepard is there, but it's Larry White at the line. Still going to be Pamela and they make contact. Britton has broken the race car. AJ Slideways. Alan Johnson wins. Whether you hug the infield tires or rip the cushion, you found the fastest dirt track podcast in motorsports. Welcome to Where Legends Are Made, the official podcast of Land of Legends Raceway. Here's Stephen and Brad Ovens. Welcome back. Season two of Where Legends Are Made here on the Land of Legends Raceway podcast uh, for 2021. We're back for a whole new season and we're kicking it off here this week as we get ready to go for opening night at the Land of Legends, Saturday, May 8th, coming up this week. And I uh, want to give our a shout out to our sponsors for this weekend, Sherwin-Williams Paint, located uh, at 77 Eastern Boulevard in Canadagua, uh, Sherwin-Williams Paint. Uh, you can actually, you can find them right on Facebook. Uh, in the search box, type in at sherwin Williams. 1565 and that'll get you right to the facebook page of your local sherwin williams paint store at 77 eastern boulevard in canadagua you can also find them online at sherwin-williams.com and use the store locator option and type in canadagua they're also available by phone at 585-394-5459 so we want to send a shout out and a thank you to the local Sherwin-Williams paint store for being on board here with this week's racing program. And we also want to give a shout out to one of our newer sponsors at the Land of Legends. And that, of course, is Proudy's Bar, located uh, in Interlake and a uh, brand new sponsor for this season as well. They're located at 3365 Potter Road in Interlake. And give them a call by phone, 607 607- 2940074 they've got a whole list of appetizers wings uh fried food baskets uh burgers sandwiches and their specials on Friday and Saturdays of uh, fish fry and a fish fry sandwich they've also got some awesome looking uh Proudy's bar apparel so check that out as well and we actually posted pictures of uh two pages of the menu as well as a picture of all their apparel uh, and their logo. And that's uh, Proudy's Bar located in Interlake. And they are a silver level sponsor this weekend. They're also sponsoring the Proudy's Bounty. And how that will work is any division this season, if a driver doubles up in features the following week when they go for three in a row, the Proudy's Bounty will be on the line. If another driver in the field is able to knock them off before getting three in a row, the driver who wins the feature that night will take home an extra hundred dollars courtesy of Proudy's bar. And that is the Proudy's bounty for 2021. And we also want to uh, shout out MP delivery. Uh, boy, they have uh, been trying like heck to uh, get involved uh, with, uh, with our opening night show. Uh, we've lost uh, the April 24th show. We lost a show on May 1st, and uh, we're hoping that uh, May 8th is going to be what gets it done uh, to get a show in here for 2021. And MP Delivery is going to be a big part of that. And we want to thank them for all of their support. And they are looking for drivers. So if you are 21 years or older with a clean driving record and uh, an ability to uh, you know, deliver packages in the uh, Rochester, Farmington, Victor area, uh, give uh, MP delivery a shout. Uh, they would uh, love to have you as a part of their team. Uh, that's at MP delivery, uh, proud sponsor of the land of legends. And we're happy to have them aboard here this weekend. So that's uh, MP delivery, Sherwin Williams paint and Proudy's bar all on the card for this week in terms of our track sponsors. Also, Land of Legends TV, if we haven't said it enough and you didn't know that we were live streaming for free this season, you must have been living under a rock because we have been beating the horse on that one. Uh, Free weekly live streaming 
Uh, every single Saturday night, you'll see the uh, live video for free. Landoflegendstv.com is where you need to go to uh, in order to sign up for your free account. All it takes is an email address. You just make an account with your email address, and you can see each and every Saturday night's race live for free. And uh, we will be putting out, I just had a question the other day, we will be putting out information after we get through our first race, whether it's this Saturday or the following Saturday. Hopefully, Mother Nature lets us get one in this week. But we will put out information on how to view on demand. There will be a season pass, low, low price for the entire season for on-demand viewing. But every Saturday night uh, will be live while the racing action is taking place. So a little bit different format for this week's podcast is we don't have any uh, highlights uh, to talk about. We don't have any results because we haven't raced yet. We do have a practice session that we got in uh, just about a week ago, a little over a week ago by the time the podcast comes out. But um, we uh, are hoping very, very much that uh, we can get this opening night event in this Saturday night. And if you want to come out to the track and see it, this is how you do so. Saturday uh, afternoon, the pit gates will open at 3.30 in the afternoon. Pit passes are $40. General admission gates will open at 5 o'clock. General admission for adults will stay the same price at $15 for adults, $13 for seniors. Kids under 16 are free. So uh, kids under 16 are free, uh, keeping with that policy from seasons past. And uh, always great to see uh, kids coming out uh, with their folks out to the races and spending a good Saturday night at the racetrack. Uh, also, uh, free camping. If you're coming from out of the area, want to come in, watch the races, camp out overnight, build a little fire at the end of the night, uh, free camping at the Land of Legends. Of course, we do have a uh, garbage disposal carry-in, carry-out policy, but uh, the camping is free, and when you come out to camp, uh, we just ask the campers to try to keep uh, along the tree line uh, to keep that general admission parking area open for our fans that are coming in and uh, leaving at the end of the night. So free camping at the Land of Legends as always. And that's going to be about it for the information. We'll have big block modified sportsman, 305 sprint cars, street stocks and hobby stocks. New for this season, hobby stocks, racing heats and features. Uh, and we are starting uh, just a little bit earlier uh, than seasons past. Hot laps will be at 5.30 in the evening, and the first green flag of the night will fly at 6.30. And that's all coming up Saturday, May 8th, opening night at the Land of Legends, brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paint, Prouty's Bar, and MP Delivery. Stick around, folks. Coming up on the other side of this quick break, we've got the A-Main interview of the week. And this week, joining us on Where Legends Are Made is Speed Connection Sportsman competitor. Already got some races under his belt in 2021 and already has a win down in the state of South Carolina. Nick Query uh, going to be joining us on this week's A-Main Interview of the Week. Stick around. We'll have Nick Query in just a moment. Land of Legends Raceway fans, tune in each and every week of the racing season to Where Legends Are Made, a podcast dedicated to covering the drama, excitement, and hear from the drivers from your favorite dirt track. Stephen Ovens and Brad Ovens walk you through the week that was Where Legends Are Made. Subscribe on Apple or Google Podcasts and visit landoflegendspodcast.com. Fans of Land of Legends Raceway and the Where Legends Are Made podcast, We've got a great opportunity for you to feature your business. We have opportunities here to sponsor where legends are made. We have all different features of the podcast. You can pick to be a sponsor of one of our heat races. Maybe you want your business name attached to the top 10 read ops for the week. Maybe you want your business to be the one that's heard when we play our highlight of the week. Maybe you're a history buff. You want to sponsor heat with three where we talk about this week in Land of Legends Raceway history. Maybe you want to be the A main sponsor. So when we interview our main driver of the week, you want to get your business out in front of that. We've got plenty of opportunities for you to do so, and we can work inside of any budget. And believe me, if you're listening to this and you're saying, 
oh, I don't think my business has the advertising budget to sponsor a podcast. Believe me, we can fit inside of anybody's advertising budget. Get your business a little bit of advertising here on where legends are made. Contact us right here on the Land of Legends Raceway Facebook page if you're interested and put your business in front of all of our fans where legends are made. Let's roll back the calendar with this week in Land of Legends history. Welcome back to Where Legends Are Made. This week in Land of Legends Raceway history goes back to 1976. Bob Miller, uh, track appointed track historian, uh, digging this up for us. The 1976 racing season at Canandaigua Speedway was supposed to start on Saturday, April 24th. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, that show was canceled uh, with the gloomy skies of the morning turned into an all-day soaking rain. That also sounds familiar. Pushing the season opener back to May 1st. And again, this is back in 1976. When May 1st rolled around, a large field of modifieds and late mile models unloaded in the pits, but so did an afternoon soaking rainstorm, which once again postponed the season opener to Saturday, May 8th. And this is back in 76, and we're in the same exact boat. Pretty uh, pretty incredible uh, synergy there uh, on the dates, all lining right up there. The season finally got underway on Saturday, May 8th, and it was Alan Johnson and Jeff Kapiser winning in their divisions on that opener on Saturday, May 8th. So hopefully, as long as things uh, stay true, uh, to how it went down in 1976. We'll get our season opener uh, in the books here this Saturday night. That's this week in Land of Legends Raceway history. Thank you very much to Bob Miller, track historian at the Land of Legends. By the grace of God and 800 horsepower, it's time for the A-Main interview of the week. That's right. It's time for this week's A-Main Interview of the Week, and uh, we're going to bring in Nick Wary for this week's A-Main Interview of the Week, who's uh, getting ready to go racing uh, this week at the Land of Legends, but he's already got a season off to a start uh, and and off to a good one at that, and uh, we'll get to that in just a little bit, but uh, we'll welcome him in here to Where Legends Are Made. Nick, welcome aboard here for our first episode of the season. Thank you, Steve. Good to be here. Uh Looking forward to getting the season started. Well, let's uh, let's talk about that. Uh, you had the car out at our practice session last Tuesday. Uh, got to, to do a little bit of a shakedown. Uh, we'll talk about South Carolina in a little bit, but tell us about the first shakedown at uh, at Canandaigua for the year. No, I'm not bad. Um, we had, like you said, we had the car out in South Carolina, so we did have some laps on it. Um, just put a new body and, you know, some lettering on it. That was about the only change we had, but we were just there running into some new tires, getting some laps on those and, you know, checking to make sure we had the right stagger and everything that we were going to need for the, for the opener. So the car ran good, um, you know, handled pretty good. We got a little work to do to, uh, them not a very good time trial or, you know, hot lapper, I guess you would say. So we weren't on the top of the board, but the car handled good. And I think we'll have a, have a good car all year long. What compared to a season where you don't start the season out at, at an event in South Carolina, how does the checklist for that practice day, how does that differ this year versus maybe years past? You no, know, it's much easier, much easier on the mind. That's for sure. Cause you know, all, th all kinds of things are running through your head, you know, did I tighten this? Did I tighten this? Or is this fluid full? Do we remember to, we remember to fill the rear end with gear oil? Um, just all kinds of things running through your head and then you're checking for leaks and, you know, want to make sure your car handles and make sure the brakes work. And it's just a long, uh, long laundry list of things you have to check if you don't get a practice session in, but we took care of that in South Carolina. So we should be in good shape. Well, let's, let's talk about the uh, South Carolina. You, you certainly, uh, checked all the, the, uh, preseason boxes and, and, you know, get us a, a win and a, a second, uh, how how did that feel to be able to to roll off the trailer for the first time with with you know with the car and and to come out that strong? I mean, I don't think you can start your season any better than that. No, it was pretty awesome, and we were you know we were looking at a race, and I haven't tra traveled in quite a while to 
tour races. I mean, we followed the grit series and a little bit of dirt series racing here and there over the years. And we traveled some, you know, down to Charlotte and um, Pennsylvania and ran some tracks. And we saw that one pop up and I said, you know what, we haven't been out in a while. Let's go down there, try it out. After the COVID season we had, we didn't travel much last year. So we had a, uh, a new car that we bought, didn't have any laps on it to us. I mean, it was, it was a year old, but to us, it was new. So I wanted to get some laps on that. And uh, we went out to Matt Shepard's shop right before we went. He scaled it up, did a few setup tweaks that we missed in the shop. And uh, we went down to South Carolina. And the only thing that we changed the whole weekend that we were there um, were gears. I think I changed gears one time. That was it. And then tires, just back and forth. But, you know, we had a practice set of tires for the first night. We had a second set for the second night. And then we had one for the third night. And that's the only change we made to the car the whole week long. So that made the weekend even better as we weren't, you know, thrashing and changing this and changing that. And then to go out and win that first night, and you know, that exceeded my expectations. There's a lot of strong runners down there. Um, new car to us. So we were just going out looking to get some laps. And, you know, I, I know we're capable of winning and running top five, but coming out of the box with a win like that was pretty awesome. And we backed it up with a second place uh, start 10th. The next night so it was an awesome trip for us the guys had a good time and uh, we had good results and it was a good payday so hopefully uh dirt car puts us on again next year uh if they're supposed to and uh, we can go back down try it again you talked about your guys that that traveled down i mean you had quite a group that uh that went down uh not just crew guys but racers and and some of your crew guys are racers and it, it from afar watching from home here up in new york I mean, you could just tell, you know, how, how much fun, even, even in a little bit of chilly weather, just how much fun you guys were having. And, and certainly success helps, uh, helps out the fun a little bit, but to see your crew guys there late in the race, the night that you win and the next night running second, you know, just the, the fist bumps and the guys, you know, cheering. Yeah. I mean, that just seems like you guys had uh, a great trip for the whole crew, uh, you know, to, to travel that far, uh, and, and to go down and have some fun and, and then get the cherry on top with some success on top of that, uh, really a, a great trip for you guys. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, it was actually my first trip to Myrtle beach as well as, you know, my brother and, uh, my cousin Frank went down and helps the same with those guys first trip to Myrtle beach. And of course, when we got there it was 40 degrees out and 30 at night. So we froze, but we, uh, we had a good time. Like I said, we had a, we had a big room, a uh, big suite on the beach with a couple of bedrooms. So all the guys were in there. We went down with Kevin Ridley, a good friend of mine, and, uh, his couple of guys, Jamal and Joey went down and helped him. And we had Mark Minutlow with us and it was just a good, you know, it's a good time for everyone to, you know, get out of the house after the season we had with, you know, COVID and stuff like that. But like I said, we didn't do much traveling. So for the guys to get out and then, uh, we ran well, but we also had a lot of fun down there. You know, we went out to eat and, you know, mini golfed and this and that, did all kinds of stuff down there. So it was a good time. And uh, in the back of my mind, it's just, you know, you want to have your crew guys, you want to have those guys have a good time too, not only at the racetrack, but you got to remember they're taking off time from work. They're spending, you know, paychecks to go down there and uh, they're there to help you, but they're also there to, you know, have a good time too and get out of the house and get a little enjoyment out of it. So we had the best of both worlds. We ran well, had a good time. And, uh, Hopefully we can do it again. Well, I think I'd certainly be remiss if uh, if I didn't ask this question. I'd probably get the kick in the shorts from the promoter, but um, uh, pretty cool uh, for all the folks up here that are either subscribers to Land of Legends TV or uh, even some of us on the production crew, uh, you know, to have the logo on the side of your car while you're having success down there as well. Yeah, that was an honor for me to, you know, be able to, have that on the side of the car and uh, Paul Cole and I've become friends over the years, not only through, you know, sponsorship through the, the champion and super gen. Um, but we became good friends, uh, away from the racetrack too. And, uh, Paul stepped up and helped us out to go down there. And, uh, I was glad to be able to put it in, in victory lane and get land of legends TV some airtime. We definitely had, you know, a lot of comments about it and, you know, some people at the track with questions, different fans, you know, asking where we race and we were able to tell them, you know, all year long, you guys can, can tune in and watch it for free this year. So we made some new friends down there. A lot of people will be watching and, uh, you know, some people in the pits that park next to us, same kind of thing, asking us what it was all about. So we were able to, to spread the news about land of legends TV, and hopefully we get some new viewers this year. 
talking about that quick too. That's a, that's a good topic that you bring up because, you know, you're, you're one of the guys that I, that comes to my mind pretty quick when it comes to being able to take that new situation that we have at the racetrack with the streaming, you know, everybody, anybody with an email address can, can now watch for free uh, live on Saturday nights, but from your perspective as a driver and, and uh, you know, a car owner uh, that's, that's had to be pretty big this off season uh, when approaching and, and trying to sell some sponsorship this year. Yeah, it's huge. And it's just another tool that, you know, there's a lot of tools that, you know, right at our fingertips for sponsorship that, you know, over the years I've, I've learned to use and, you know, some people I've been, you know, working with people trying to help them get sponsors, but it's, it's all about what you can do for your sponsor, not what they can do for you. So that was just another tool that we could use to, you know, tell people, you know, this is the audience, you know, this is, this is not just everyone that's walked in the gate that night. This is people from, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours, another state away. So it's just a, a bigger audience and get your name out there even more and more. And, uh, you know, just another tool to, to help get sponsorship. And I think it's going to be great for the track. It's great for the drivers. Cause you know, if you think about it, that's just like a commercial space on a, on a TV and you're, you know, you're watching a sporting event, football game, this and that that's, that's a Budweiser commercial, same kind of thing. Um, but land of legends TV, there's not, there's not a lot of that out there. There's other tracks that are doing it, you know, pay-per-view this and that, but not for free. So there's a lot of folks that'll be tuning in, checking it out for the first time. And, you know, that's, what's going to pop up there, you know, the land of legends TV, you know, 25 car, or even if you're tra- if you're sponsoring a billboard at the track, you know, that's seen on there. So it's just a, a lot of opportunity. Um, I know talking to Paul, Paul talks a lot about impressions and there's a lot of impressions that that sponsor is going to get, whether it's on the side of your race car or the sponsor on the track, there's just, you know, the audience is much bigger now because it's going to be all online. It's going to be free. We're going to have new viewers. This person is going to tell the next person. They're going to tell family, friends, this and that. So I think it's good for everyone all the way around. You know, I, I think, you know, there's some of us that have such high hopes and know that that potential is there. What's the conversation with drivers on that? Are, are drivers talking about that right now? Is it something that maybe we'll, you know, they'll talk about more as the season goes on? What's what's the uh, temperature of the drivers when it comes to, you know, trying to comprehend how much bigger of an audience they have this year? I think some understand it. Uh, guys like myself have been around a while and, you know, know the sponsorship game and, you know, we're good at it. And then I think some have a little work to do on it because it's not, you know, it's hard to get sponsors, especially, you know, the last few years of this COVID stuff going on and you really got to uh, open the bag of tricks to try to, you know, get out with sponsors and talk to them and tell them that, you know, how you can help their business. So it's just, I think guys have to read into it a little bit more, uh, think outside the box. So I think as the season goes on and more people are talking about it, um, it's getting, you know, shared around, get some new viewership, new businesses looking to do some advertising. I know everyone's busy right now, especially contractors and vendors, everybody's crazy busy. So they might be looking to spend a little more advertising dollars um getting their name out there but i think the drivers need to look more into it you know it's not just you know telling your buddy to to watch you on tv on pay-per-view because it's going to be free it's you know it's there to help you it's a tool um i appreciate what paul did that's you know he's bending over backwards for the drivers because he you know other tracks are doing this for you know 15 20 bucks a whack and you know he could easily done that and got you know money in his pocket but it's going to be for free um, and I think we just need to take advantage of it. And I think there's a lot of drivers out there that can, you know, that can take the time, go to new sponsors with it and, you know, might be able to, to get something from themselves. It's, I mean, the, the days of the paper proposals and, you know, kind of throwing up a Facebook post, asking if anybody wants to be on the side of the car, I think those days are gone. There's, there's guys out there that are going the extra mile to, you know, show the potential, um, that they can bring businesses with sponsorship. And, you know, I think more and more guys are going to need to do it or they're going to struggle. They're going to have to do it out of their pocket. Let's give, uh, let's give, uh, NG promotions a shout out here too, you know, cause it, it ties right into this conversation. Um, you know, that has been a big tool, you know, talking about tools, that's a big tool that, uh, that you've utilized. And, and what I think, you know, everybody, you know, 
that's on the page understands what's what's going on and how it works and everything. But what I've been rather impressed with is, you know, you know, a lot of guys that uh, that can do raffles and such that that try to benefit their team and such. You guys have taken it a step extra. You, this isn't just going toward the 25G. You guys are supporting other race teams. Hell, you're supporting another race car in your own division. I mean, that I just thought that I was really impressed with that. Yeah, it's taken right off. We started it last fall. I was looking to sell my car and, you know, it's tough to sell, you know, a whole complete car. A lot of guys go out and buy new ones and, you know, and a guy looking to get into the sport, you know, tries to piece them together, you know, buy this part, that part to like come up with enough to, to buy a whole car. So I actually sought from another, uh, another driver raffled the car. I said, you know what, I'm going to give that a try. So we raffled the whole car. It went well. Um, and then it just took off from there. We had some things laying around the shop um, of a dealer for, for Paul uh, with a champion power supply equipment. So we had some generators and pressure washers that we did the same kind of thing on. And, you know, that benefited us. We ended up getting the new car. That's how we had came up with the funds to do that. Um, but then it just took off from there and there's more members and more members and, you know, we do a lot of fundraising out of there. We did a lot of different things. And I know last year we did a lot of benefits. Uh, we had a couple of families with uh, actually family members that passed away from cancer. But uh, before they had passed, we did some fundraisers to help out with, you know, medical bills and, you know, cost of the families going up to the hospital and seeing them hotel stays, stuff like that. So we were able to help out with that. And then it, it rolled into Christmas time and the you know, we just kept doing all these, you know, on online raffles and fundraising. And then it turned into a, uh, a Christmas drive that we did. So we were able to give a couple thousand dollars worth of Christmas gifts away. And then it, it just kept rolling and, and going from there. So we kind of do it every week and we do different, uh, we do NASCAR pools and actually tonight we have the super dirt car series pool. So we were able, like you said, we were able to sponsor a couple of race cars, uh, Timmy Borden in our class, um, uh, young driver, I know he doesn't have a lot of sponsorship just starting out. And I was in that place, you know, back 15 years ago when I started this real good tough. kid, and, uh, real good kid. Yep. Good kid. Good family. They work hard. Um, they're not all over Facebook, you know, begging for help, you know, begging for sponsorship. They go out, they do well with what they have. Um, then I respect that. And that was, that was one of the people we reached out to this year. We're going to sponsor them. Um, and then recently we picked up a couple go-kart racers, the nine-year-old and the 14-year-old, uh, the Robinson girls race over at Paradise. That was where I had my first race in the Mike Rod. And uh, we were looking to help someone out. The page was doing really well. Um, my racing, you know, stuff is kind of set for the year. We haven't had any races yet, but we're in a good place there. So I figured we could help help others with it. And uh, we helped those guys out this year, sponsoring their kart team. And we're going to continue to do the same. We have a couple more things coming up for different fundraisers for for different people and organizations. So we'll keep rolling with it. And then as long as, you know, people like to keep doing it, we'll roll with it. No, uh, that's, that's great. Really good stuff there. Uh, let's talk. You mentioned your racing effort. Let's, let's talk about that. Um, you know, mother nature willing, uh, hopefully we're all getting on the racetrack this week, but uh, talking about your racing efforts, uh, you unveiled a, a new graphics package and, not only does it look sharp, it's got a uh, it's got a very special meaning uh, behind a uh, change in the color scheme. Tell us about that. Yeah, it definitely does. I need to start out by you know thanking my brother. My brother started up his graphics business uh, this year, Image X Graphics. Um, here's him and uh, Kirsten DeCorey, Beth Ann Land. It's a it's a team of three down there, and uh, they got into it, and uh, they're doing awesome work down there. So. They came up with uh, an awesome layout for us with a new car. Like you said, new new scheme this year. Uh, my girlfriend and I, Mercedes, um, are expecting in August. And uh, we found out it's going to be a baby girl. So we'll have two girls in the house. And that's where the color scheme came from. So we'll be looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully she can hold out until the, the last race of the season up there at Canandaigua. Awesome. What Sophia think about the pink? No, she's pumped. She was she was excited about it, but uh, when she first came in the garage and saw it, she kind of she told me, "I'm embarrassed for you." And I said, "Sophia, what are you embarrassed for? Well, you have girl colors on your boy car, so it uh, it was it was pretty cool to see her uh, involved with it. And you know, she comes out and gives me a hand with little things around the shop and uh, rides around in the yard once in a while on it. So it's it's good to get her involved in it, and we're gonna have a good season. Awesome. Uh, 
talk to talk to me about you know goals for this season. I think it was two seasons ago we saw you down in Victory Lane. Um, what what are the goals this year? And and are those goals higher now after the success you had in South Carolina? Um, I think our goals it's always the same for me. It's just more wins, um, run consistently up front. Um, and we had a lot of top fives last year, a couple seconds. Uh, we went down to Dundee and got a second, but we were, I really couldn't get in the groove last year at all. I mean, we ran Canada, it just didn't feel like I had a lot of seat time at all. I mean, we had, uh, you know, just with the, we did do much traveling and I just couldn't get comfortable with a car. I didn't know, you know, what it was, it was the same car we had the year before. And I think maybe that a part of that was just, I settled with what we had the year before because it was good. And, you know, some of the other guys stepped it up and got faster. So I'm not really sure what happened, but um, I'm really looking forward to this year. You know, the, the car ran well. Uh, we beat a lot of top guys down in South Carolina. Um, I know we have a good setup underneath it, you know, guys helping us out. So I think we'll be in good shape, but yeah, as always, we want to win. Um, the points will come. Uh, I haven't been much of a, a points racer. And, you know, if there's weeks that we need to miss for this or that, that's what we'll do. But I don't foresee any of that. I think we'll have a, a good season and uh, hopefully we'll be there in the end. Well, I, I don't uh, I don't mean to bring up any brotherly rivalries, but um, my God, after the season Gibbs had last year, uh, he, he drove right on by on the all time sportsman win list. He's up to 11 now. That's crazy. Yeah. He had an awesome year. He, he to, to be quite frank, he, he kicked their ass every week last year. So there's only, uh, I think a couple times they beat him, but he had a really good year. Um, but we need to change that. I'm proud of him and happy for him, but we need to, <laughs> we need to get back on top of it because I can't listen to it all, all year again. <laughs> so hopefully we'll go out and uh, beat up on him. It's already started. I already told him that, you know, you're only as good as your last race. Of course, his last race, I think was a fourth or a fifth and we had a win in a second. So we have bragging rights so far for this year. Awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you, you're surrounded by good company. Uncle Paul's up on top of that wins list, 45 wins. Kevin is just one win away from being in second place all time, all by himself. He's tied with Steve Gray right now. Gibbs, after his season last year, has got 11 wins career now. You're at 10. Um, you know, you guys are, are in some pretty darn good company uh, when it comes to the Gwery clan and, and trying to uh, add to those numbers this year. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we can add to those win totals, all of us. And, uh, you know, we'll all be there. We've had a lot of laps around that place. And, I mean, the competition is a lot. So it's saying that, you know, all the wins that you have here, it's tough to win there. It's tough to get top fives. And anybody that races anywhere will tell you, you know, when you come there, you're racing against the best. And there's a lot of experience there between Paul and Kevin and myself and Kane Bristol. And, you know, Kevin Root was there. There's Mark Cicelli was there the year before that. And, you know, there's just a lot of talent there, a lot of fast cars, good equipment. It's tough to win there. So hopefully we can uh, we can knock out a couple wins. We're not a team that usually goes out and wins five, six, seven, eight features, features a year. We, you know, we hit one here and there, but hopefully we can we can run up front consistent and uh, those top fives will turn into wins. Good deal, man. Well, we we talked sponsored and support. And uh, before we. Before we end this, I definitely want to give you an opportunity to highlight uh, all the folks that are behind the effort. Sure. Yeah. A lot of returning sponsors that we had, um, David Young, uh, the Young Agency, Phelps Cement Products, Jerry, Justin Harris, Champion Power Equipment, Paul Cole, uh, Waterloo Container, Upstate Premier Mortgage, uh, Jesse Card, new sponsor we picked up this year, um, ImageX Graphics, my brother's graphics shop here at Waterloo. So if anybody needs graphics, they're the guys to go to. BG Oil, Tim Goble, um, Scott Jeffries Performance, Kevin Root, Tammy, uh, everybody at Jeffries Performance that helps us out. And then everyone that uh, participates on the NG Promotions page. Uh, like I said before, that's, that's a big help to our race team and it helps out, helps out others. And then uh, my support group, at home, uh, Mercedes, my girlfriend, Sophia, um, my parents, my brothers, um, Matt Mischewski, Kyle Lovera, those guys have been helping out quite a bit this year. And then uh, just everyone that helps out the track and comes. And, you know, we have a lot of friends, family that comes. So we appreciate everyone's support and look forward to a, a good season. A little racing and a family reunion every Saturday night there at Land of Legends. We're looking forward to it this year, man. 
Thanks, Steve. Yeah, hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be a good year and uh, we can come out on top. Well, fans, don't miss out uh, again. Opening night is this Saturday night at the Land of Legends. Uh, hot laps at five thirty and race time is at six thirty. Don't miss it. You'll see uh, Nick out there in the 25 G in our speed connection sportsman division. Nick, thanks again, man. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Land of Legends Raceway fans, tune in each and every week of the racing season to Where Legends Are Made, a podcast dedicated to covering the drama, excitement, and hear from the drivers from your favorite dirt track. Stephen Ovens and Brad Ovens walk you through the week that was Where Legends Are Made. Subscribe on Apple or Google Podcasts and visit landoflegendspodcast.com. Fans of Land of Legends Raceway and the Where Legends Are Made podcast, We've got a great opportunity for you to feature your business. We have opportunities here to sponsor where legends are made. We have all different features of the podcast. You can pick to be a sponsor of one of our heat races. Maybe you want your business name attached to the top 10 read-offs for the week. Maybe you want your business to be the one that's heard when we play our highlight of the week. Maybe you're a history buff. You want to sponsor heat with three where we talk about this week in Land of Legends Raceway history. Maybe you want to be the A main sponsor. So when we interview our main driver of the week, you want to get your business out in front of that. We've got plenty of opportunities for you to do so, and we can work inside of any budget. And believe me, if you're listening to this and you're saying, oh, I don't think my business has the advertising budget to sponsor a podcast, believe me, we can fit inside of anybody's advertising budget. Get your business a little bit of advertising here on where legends are made. Contact us right here on the Land of Legends Raceway Facebook page if you're interested and put your business in front of all of our fans where legends are made. That's going to do it for season two, episode one of the Where Legends Are Made podcast, the official podcast of the Land of Legends Raceway. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday night, our opening Night event for 2021 brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paint as well as Proudy's Bar and MP Delivery. We will see you at the track where legends are made. Land of Legends Raceway fans, tune in each and every week of the racing season to Where Legends Are Made, a podcast dedicated to covering the drama, excitement, and hear from the drivers from your favorite dirt track. Stephen Ovens and Brad Ovens walk you through the week that was Where Legends Are Made. Subscribe on Apple or Google Podcasts and visit landoflegendspodcast.com.